press the bell icon on YouTube and don't miss another update. Uh, we are here talking to Ruskin Bond, India's most loved author, who is out with his new book, Song of India, the fourth in a series of memoirs published by Puffin Books. So, hello, Mr. Bond. Hello, hey, yeah. good morning, and uh, um, nice to see you and talk to you. And uh, as you mentioned, this is the uh, fourth uh, in a series of boyhood memoirs. Huh? And um, yes, yes, yes. Song of India describes my last year in India when I was 16, uh, about to leave for England <laughs> for, to make my fortune and become hopefully famous, uh, um, just the dream of a boy. And so this particular, uh, this particular memoir describes that year, the friends I made, um, a little romance and uh, um, and the heartbreak of, in a way, going away. Hmm? Yes. But even then, uh, I went through the book, you were very sure that you're going to come back to India. Even yes, as yes, you were leaving. No? By, the, <laughs> by the time I left India, I was sort of already wanting to come back. <laughs> so, um, uh, the, the, the three years that I did spend abroad, uh, during which I went through many jobs and I wrote, managed to write a, my first novel and eventually find a publisher. And it it brought me back. Uh, all the time I wanted to come back. Huh? Uh, but uh, but this is the year, the year before I went away. And hopefully um, th there'll be a fifth, there'll be a fifth story, a fifth memoir about the time I spent in London and the Channel Islands and the book that got written and finally brought me back to India. That would be wonderful. I have the first three here. I'm still waiting. <laughs> the first three are right <laughs> here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, look, look, uh -huh. Looking great. Very yeah. well, well, nicely illustrated. And uh, yes. the same illustrator, Mr. Joe Glaker, who did all the, who did all the books. I think he's tried to make the boy look a lot like you. That's what I was noticing in all the books. That's true. But I think I might have given them some early photographs. Hmm? So it yeah. would have helped. Hmm? I do wish, though, we could have done this in person. But because of the lockdown and everything, yeah, this is the second best thing. Oh, right. <laughs> well, then I, <laughs> of course, the good thing about the lockdown is that it's made me write a little more, in a way. <laughs> Are you writing more? more? Hmm. Yeah. Yes, yes, I've um, written a, two or three new stories during the lockdown, and I hope that somebody will publish them too afterwards. <laughs> but, um, I'm sure, yeah. So, so, because for me it hasn't been too difficult, um, because after all, most writers do write from home or work from home, and um, yeah. so it has just been any sort of an extension of of my normal working life, in a way. Of course, it's nice to go out now, now and then and, you know, go somewhere for lunch or for a picnic and all that will come back, I hope. <laughs> yeah, because I was going through your books and, uh, you know, even as a boy, you loved walking, walking endlessly yeah. all throughout there. Are so in the lockdown, I'm That's not sure if that was... They, they used to call me the road inspector. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to walk so much. But now I don't, unfortunately, I'm... <laughs> Um, I'm I'm in my 80s and um, can't walk as hard as I used to. Hmm? Yeah. Um, but I can I can still pace around. <laughs> yeah. And uh, this uh, the the book Song of India also marks 70 years of your writing career. It does, yes, uh, because that first story was published in 1951, the the year of, uh, of this story. Yeah. Um, and um, here I am, I'm still writing stories, huh? <laughs> um, 70 years later, yes, completing 70 years. Huh? No. Yeah, As luckily for us. Hmm? Yeah. yeah, and, and um, uh, I've done a few other things in my life, but now and then I've had to 
take the odd job because of for economic reasons. But I say for a for the greater part of those seventy years, I have made a living from my pen, uh, which yeah. was what I wanted to do always. Yeah. So uh, you've so written that at the age. I've made my. So yes, you were. No, I was saying you were very clear from the age of sixteen itself that you wanted to be a writer. Do you remember That's the correct. exact moment? Huh? Yeah, I was. Uh, it was a dream, and um, which I made into re a reality. Um, and right from the the time I finished school, I had. Uh, Sometimes people ask me, "What if did I have any other ambitions?" Well, they were very odd ones. You know, at at one time at school, I wanted to be a tap dancer. <laughs> at another occasion, uh, or a football player. Uh, but but of course, I knew in my heart that uh, I was going to be a writer. And when I came home after finishing school, as I describe in the story. Um, my mother asked me, well, Ruskin, what do you want to do with yourself now? And I said, Mom, I think I'm going to be a writer. And she said, don't be silly, go and join the army. <laughs> In those days, everyone went to the army. It was We didn't have much choice by way of a career hmm? back in the 1950s. All my, most of my friends went into the army. Um, but I think the army was better off without me you know would have had a, another beetle bailey if i'd been in the ranks i think she also suggested that you have very good handwriting so maybe you could become a clerk as well <laughs> that's right <laughs> a clerk and it was, uh, but i wasn't yeah. good in maths but at least i could add and and add and subtract <laughs> so i could have done and as i did when i went to jersey into england i worked as a clerk for a couple of years and um it was very boring, I have to say, <laughs> but but um, I had to stick with it while I wrote my book at night. So I would come home from work and do, you know write at night. But that year in yeah. Dunedin, I was free, footloose, um, wandering here and there, writing when I felt like it, um, having friends, playing badminton with this wonderful girl. Who I write about. Yes, Raj, you've mentioned, yeah. <laughs> falling for her yeah. and feeling very jealous when I realized that her parents were going to arrange her marriage. <laughs> um, yes, but, you um, mentioned the paratha and the pickles she got for you, which you loved, yeah. yeah. <laughs> wonderful parathas. Um, yeah. The, yes, the, the, I guess the best way to a boy's heart is, is, is two puris and parathas. <laughs> At least for me it was. Uh, I was a very greedy young chap. <laughs> and she always beat me at badminton, of course. She was a champion player, actually. So are you having a lot of parathas in lockdown? And yes. Samosas? Um, uh, yeah. uh, Bina, my granddaughter, makes parathas and puris, excellent puris. Um, and I like, one of my favorite dishes is chole padure. Hmm? Chole padure, hmm? which is yeah. the North Indian dish. What else do I like? All sorts of spicy things. Hmm? Yeah. Chikis, gorgappas, um, you name it. <laughs> yeah, Lemon tarts uh, we heard you enjoy. Yeah, but I, you're right. But I'm not, I don't have a sweet tooth really. Um, I okay. prefer spicy things. Hmm. Yeah. You've also yeah. mentioned how, uh, you know, you can tell uh, from the fruits that are growing what season it is in India. So, yes, yes, yeah. that's true. Uh, yeah. um, especially if you're living uh, uh, in the, I guess if you're living in the plains, because you, and if you're living in a small town, and you're, so, as Derudun was in those days, uh, uh, it was full of orchards. So we had lychee gardens and mango groves, guava, uh, guava orchards, uh, of course, and uh, papayas and plantains and things. So it was a, the Dune Valley was a good place for fruit hmm? and for growing yeah. things. Yeah. Uh, well, now it grows um, <laughs> um, high-rise buildings, <laughs> more or less. But but you you can still get lychees and mangoes. Huh? Although this year, I'm afraid the the, the lychee crop somehow it got infested, hmm? and uh, and uh, 
we couldn't have any leakage. So, yeah. but uh, so, uh, but you're right. Uh, you can uh, it's tell the time of the year by the fruit that's uh, in season. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, I, I uh, talking about Song of India, you've written about your experience of when you were 16. So, you uh, written about it very clearly. And yes. you've said that 16 is a wonderful age to be. And yes. uh, so, along with that, uh, your memories of being 16, I also want to ask you, uh, you know, since um, now you're in your 80s. So, does the boy, the little boy inside of you, is it alive and kicking? Do you feel any different oh, yeah, at this age? Hmm. Yeah. I can't get rid of that little boy. <laughs> He's, in fact, um, friends often tell me I haven't grown up, that I'm in fact still 16. Mm -hmm. But um, so uh, the, the, and I, I tell kids to value their childhood and their boyhood. Uh, because they're not going to get it a second time around, at least uh, uh, not in this incarnation. You know, so um, uh, you're not going to be 16 again. So be a, have a wonderful time. <laughs> uh, uh, don't, don't neglect your work or your studies, but uh, at the same time, do all the things that give you pleasure. Go for, go for hikes, go for, have adventures, Go on expeditions, uh, read lots of books, um, go to the pictures. Uh, I still love going to the pictures. That's true. That was a great film buff. Um, now I don't. I'm, somehow it's not the same on television. Hmm? It used to be great going to a cinema hall. <laughs> and, yeah, I've uh, seen with your pocket money went on a lot of films at that time, right? Uh, Laurel and Hardy true. and other films. <laughs> it's true. And you could, uh, you could uh, go. Go to the cinema for two rupees. You could see a film hmm? uh, in, a, in you know in um, in reasonable comfort. So um, now I think you have to pay a good deal more hmm? in in one of yes, these. Yes. Uh, what do they call them? Um, multiplexes. <laughs> oh, multiplexes. <laughs> I keep forgetting the name, but <laughs> multiplexes. It sounds like appendix or something. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> Um, the, so, so going to the movies is, is perhaps a different thing altogether now. So yes, yeah, so going out, it, you had to go out a good deal huh? uh, to have fun. Whereas yeah. now I think with kids with their with their mobiles and their apps and all the technology they've got, they they stay at home a good deal hmm? um, and don't go out as much as they used to. Hmm? Um, perhaps. Uh, which is a pity, maybe. Hmm? Um, yeah. But uh, well, times change. So, so do forms of entertainment uh, um, and uh, personal pleasures. Hmm? Yes, the outdoors are very, very important for you. What, I'm what lucky I can see is living in the hills all these years too. You know, but I I was living and working in Delhi in, uh, up till about 1964. And then uh, I escaped. I ran away. <laughs> I threw up a good job, and um, I said, no, "I'm going to live in the hills and and write full time from there." Um, and took this little cottage, not the one I'm in now, but another one down in the forest. Huh? Um, and that gave me a lot to write about because it was uh, the, there was the forest. There were animals. There were birds. Things happened. Um, uh, so there was never a dull moment in a way. In fact, in India, there's never a dull moment. <laughs> so actually, for, uh, all people now sometimes ask me, "Do you ever run out of things to write about? You run out of stories, but you can't really uh, because if something is happening around you all the time. Even if you're in lockdown, I can look out of my window and uh, see what's happening on the road." And if there's no one on the road, well, I can see further down the hill, or or in the into the trees, uh, or um, up, you know, up, up into the sky for that matter. So um, there's always something there. And then, yeah, like so, you, your room on the roof where the jackal entered. You've written about that, yeah. <laughs> that's right. In the room on the roof, the jackal entered. Up here, I've yeah. had a leopard on the roof. Huh? Oh, fact, okay. 
I, I, in fact, I was only writing about it uh, before uh, before we came on uh, came on the line. Um, I was describing a leopard moving around on the roof and then leaping into a near, nearby tree. And um, the person who was with me, this has happened some time back, wanted to shoot it. And I, I stopped him, I remember. And of course, uh, the leopard went away. They, they don't normally harm you unless you, uh, they, unless you trouble them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Makes for a wonderful story, though. Leopards often feature in my story. Somebody asked, said, you're obsessed with leopards and panthers. <laughs> so, uh, but, but I do see them from time to time. Mm -hmm. And yeah. ghosts, yeah, then ghost stories. But yes, there I, are many of them, yeah. Hmm. When I came to live in the hills, the ghost stories began, came to be written. Mm -hmm. um, because this, the hill stations are reputed to have many uh, ghosts, you know, hanging around in old houses, but um, so, um, but I have to confess, I don't, I don't keep seeing ghosts all the time. I make them up. Hmm? <laughs> yes, because even your book, they're peopled with characters, you know, and they seem very real. So a lot of young readers would also want to know uh, any of these uh, true stories or how much is fiction, how much is fact? Stories about people, you know, real people interesting people. I mean, you can't be a story writer if you're not interested in people. And uh, so a lot of my characters are based on people I've known um, over the years. Um, and the longer you live, the, the more you have to write about because your memories are full of uh, the people you've known. Um, sometimes eccentric people, sometimes children, old people, young people. Uh, and, and and everyone has a story to tell, so you don't run out of stories that way. And um, so I've written about grandparents and uncles and aunts and friends and uh, um, uh, all sorts of people. And Teachers, principals, yeah. <laughs> yeah, school yeah. principals. Yeah, yeah, teachers, <laughs> the ones I <laughs> fell out with sometimes, and um, yeah. yeah, and ghosts too. The occasional spook has to come in, <laughs> come in, yeah. and animals. Even too. parrots. I think parrots. You've written about everything. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Parrots. Well, now people don't keep parrots. It's cruel to keep them in a cage. But when I yeah. was a boy, almost every household had a parrot. <laughs> you know, um, in a sort of in the veranda, or sometimes in a small cage or a large one and people expected the parrot to talk hmm? uh, and sometimes it learned to talk and sometimes it didn't hmm? yeah. um, parrots were yes people even in your grandmother's house you uh, mentioned you grandmother's house as well right yes yeah. my yeah grandfather kept pets huh? well he had the space it was a bungalow and there was a lot of space so he could keep animals um, it's it's difficult nowadays. People living in flats or mm, small houses, it, you, uh, keeping pets and sometimes can be a bit impractical. Mm. So I don't always recommend it. But uh, yeah, certainly when I was a child, there were lots of strange creatures around the house because my grandfather kept everything from a from a chameleon once I remember to a, uh, to a monkey. Uh, <clears throat> to, a, to a python um, uh, and, uh, and a tiger cub and I've written about all of them at different times <laughs> uh, uh, so I it was, it was lucky to have that kind of childhood yeah and later um, boy but in in the in this particular series I started with uh, my father with whom I who I lost at an early age so I discussed yes. my the couple of years with my father. So that was called yeah. Looking for the Rainbow. Looking for the Rainbow, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. And then the next one was um, Till the Clouds Roll By, how I yes. had to adapt to life with a stepfather and my mother, you know, which was quite different. Yeah. And where you uh, met your half brothers and your brother yeah, and 
yes. Right. At the age of try. 10, all at the age of 10, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, then school days, and the third one was called Coming Around the Mountain, which was yes. a lot about school life, and Independence, which came in 1947 while I was still at school. So that described uh, that year, and now Song of India. Song of India, you see, I've called it that because I wrote this poem, hmm, which yes. um, uh, while I was leaving on the ship, hmm, and uh, and that's why I called it Song of India. I don't know if I can see it in this slide. I'll try to read it. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm, I'll try to read it. I think I'll manage it without glasses. Huh? Hmm. I'll sing you a song of India, a song of this golden land, of the snow upon the mountains and the waves upon the sand. I'll sing you a song of the desert wind and the hum of the ocean breeze, of the scent of the rain upon the earth and the rustle of spring in the trees. I'll sing you a song of Hindustan where the big cats roam and the peacocks dance and the sun beats down on your fevered brow and it's seldom you get a second chance. So go with the flow and follow the river from mighty Himal to the deep blue sea for time has no end and must go on forever and dreaming is only for you and me. Beautiful, thank you. thank you. I love writing poetry. The trouble is, publishers don't want to publish books of poems for the simple reason that people don't buy them. And so it's, it's commercially usually un, not very viable. So I'm very cunning. I write poems and I slip them into my stories and novels and books huh, here and there. In that way, I get them, uh, uh, get them known a bit. Huh? Because yeah. it's hard. Although uh, Penguin have published a collection of my poems, but normally it's hard to hmm, uh, to sell poetry. So I don't blame publishers, uh, but I I slip them now into my hmm, other works. Hmm. Yes, luckily again for us. I also want to ask you, uh, as a writer who's written so many books for children, uh, your books don't talk down to children. Like you've written about your father's death, as you know, in. Uh, uh, looking for the rainbow then uh, you know in the next book uh, you've written uh, till the clouds roll by you've also written about you know like you just mentioned meeting your stepfather your new family loneliness and there is no bitterness at all so for the youth today there is a lot of you know uh, they struggle with depression anxiety so many things so is there yeah. any message you know for them on how they can deal with uh, struggles yes that's um, well. That's true. I've I've always uh, never treated children as children, uh, because they and they're usually mature. So, at uh, when they're so young, um, but yes, children today do have a a, a tough time. Um, maybe not so much from the point of view of the kids don't go hungry so much as they might have done 50 years back. But there are other problems very often. Eh? Um, there's a lot of pressure on them at school and in their studies to, to get high marks, to, you know, to get high grades, because everyone says, well, you, you've got to go out into the world and compete and earn a living and have a good job and a career. So all these, these pressures are there. And um, so it, it it's hard for them to deal with them and you kids do get depressed sometimes because uh i think because because the world has changed so much you know and um, and it's almost a rat race huh? um whereas in as i grew up in perhaps more leisurely times huh? and if you if you had a dream and you were prepared to you sacrifice a little for it you you could pursue it and um, and um, so in in that way i think i was lucky although i didn't um, come from a well to do background uh, but still there, there were various freedoms and opportunities there which perhaps are not in spite of all the technological advantages that we have um, 
people are not as happy as they used to be. Hmm? <laughs> um, and uh, if, maybe if <coughs> if my if my stories can give a little hope and optimism and um, make life a little more cheerful for yo for youngsters, well, uh, I'm I'm thrilled hmm? that. That that is the case, and I I, I won't. I've never s stopped writing, and uh, as long as mind and body are functioning, I'll keep writing, and hope to please people, please youngsters uh, with what I write, give them something mm, to enjoy. <laughs> yeah. that's a wonderful thought. Um, yeah. Also, you know, uh, children love to write stories on their own. So do you have any message for children who are dreaming of becoming writers? Oh, yes. I actually, I've, um, it's amazing. When when I finished school and in the, in, as a boy, there weren't many kids who were interested in writing. This is a, a new phenomenon. Um, and I've noticed over the last 10 years or 15 years that more and more young people, children, school children, college children, uh, young people, want to write and express themselves get published even, even become uh, professional writers. Um, and this was never the case. So this is something new. And um, I never discourage anybody from wanting to write, but I would always warn them that it can be a difficult, um, difficult way of making a living, uh, at least um, until you get established and make a name for yourself. Um, in fact, I've written a little book on how to be a writer. It will come out uh, maybe in a month or two. Hmm? So um, that could help them. Um, because kids are always asking me, so give me some tips. I want to be a writer. How do I go about it? How do I start? How do I deal with writer's blog? Hmm? Um, how do I get published? You know, all sorts of questions. Huh? And um, I, try, so I try to answer them as best I can without, and I never, uh, discourage anyone but I will always say if you're going to be a writer you have to use language hmm? so master the language you're going to write in hmm? whether it's English or Hindi or whatever language you want to write in um, be fluent in it huh? uh, learn to express yourself beautifully as beautifully as you can because you're using words and sentences to tell a story or if you're not going to be a fiction writer, you can write biography, or you can write history or geography. You can write on science or medicine. Um, having a good command of language can make so many things easier for you in life, um, even if you're not going to be a writer. <laughs> but as a writer, it's essential anyway. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much, Mr. Bond, for giving us your time. And uh, I hopefully there will be a fifth book in the series now. So we'll look forward to that. Yes, I've written, in fact, I've written half of it. <laughs> During this okay. lockdown, I've written three stories, which I hope will be published in the months to come. Yes, when absolutely. We'll all be waiting for it. And that this lockdown will go and, 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 all, and this coronavirus will be bundled up and sent out to Mars or the moon or somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Very much. Nice chatting with you. Thank you.